going to talk about some common hiccups, all right? Uh, the first hiccup that I know that most of the students uh, in this class end, end up dealing with is I can't get this thing to print, right? Um, it's just not doing anything. And so kind of going back to what I alluded to in the prior video was sometimes your, your file extensions, whether it's done on a PC or a Mac, can be a problem, right? Like on a PC, sometimes you have a file and you're gonna rename it, um, you know, into you know, .g code, .g code, and then you're gonna rename it to auto 0.g, but really, really on a PC, there's really like this hidden extension .g code, right? It thinks that this is now part of the name of this file. So you have to make sure it changes the extension to .g. So you saw that warning message in the other video. Uh, you just wanna make sure that that's happening. So that's one of the most common problems, right? Common problem one, just getting the file name right uh, for these machines. The second issue I would say is getting the right uh, CAD slicing tool. So if, uh, we, if we focus here on the, on the computer, <coughs> um, I could show you here that anytime you download Cura, any version of Cura, which we use to slice our, our 3D files, um, you have to have the right machine set up, right? So um, the way you set that up is you go to machine, and we have a number of different machines here, right, that we've selected. Uh, you go, if you don't have printer bought simple metal, which you wouldn't have on a brand new installation of Cura, you'd have to go to add new machine. And then again, this is, I'm gonna cancel this. Uh, we're in Cura 15.4.6. So this is sort of the older view, but it's a reliable view. And we just come here to add new machine. We use the wizard and we look for uh, printer bot machines, hit next. And we find simple metal, we hit next. And then it says Cura is now ready to be used. And so all you have to do now is just to ensure that you've put, uh, you know, the Cura, you know, you've set up PrinterBot Simple Metal, right? And you can see as you scroll out, you can see that it's roughly the size of the build tray and everything looks good there. Um, the other issue that people often tend to uh, make mistakes with is getting the SD card in the right uh, position. So. Um, again, we'll, we'll sort of show you on this other work, non-working machine or the machine that's not on. Uh, if we take our SD card, right? So it's just the same kind of SD card you use for your digital camera. It's got metal contacts here. It slides in with the graphics on the top for the adapter, just like this goes into your computer with the graphics facing up. But when it comes to the printer, when it comes to the printer, we're putting this with the, with the electronic pins facing up towards the sky. And so actually we can see here that this is, uh, it's already got an SD card in there. So what's a little tricky is to get that thing out. And all you have to do is use those tweezers to pull it out, to take these tweezers. And remember, be very careful. These tweezers are very sharp. They're electronic tweezers, but you just kind of come in here, you pinch and you pull, and there it is, it's pulled out. So the way to get that in there, sometimes you can use your tiny fingers. If you have big hands, you can use the tweezers. You can see that it's not a great, a great easy thing to do. So you might just have to come in here and help it in. But again, kind of just get it resting there and push it in after you know that it's in the slot. Yeah, what if you drop it inside? The... It's a great question and it's happened a million times. So let's just show you how I would deal with that. So let's say you pull it out and you drop it into this hole. Oops, uh-oh, what do we do? So. There are some screws in the back. If we have to, we can, we can unbolt it, but there's two tricks to get those things out, right? Uh, you can try to, on the side here, there's a little bit of a gap. So you can either try to fish it out with this thing. And if that doesn't work, which it doesn't seem to want to work too well, uh, let's see, maybe I can get it this way. Oh, there it is. So we got it out. So a little bit of finesse with the, the uh, pallet knife and you can get it out. But that happens quite a bit, and that's a great question. How do I set up my, my filament, right? So let's say I wanna change my filament, I don't want gold. Okay, well first thing you have to do is you gotta get this thing heated up. Now, there's two ways to do it. We, we used to go into detail about how you can actually connect these machines to your computer and control everything manually, but I find now that it's just, just as easy to start a print uh, and just sort of let it warm up and before it actually starts moving, uh, just to get your, get your filament out. It, it kind of requires a bit more knowledge and comfort with the machine, but I just plugged it back in. I don't know if this memory card that we just showed you has any, any file on it. So we're gonna see here, let's see if this thing heats up. If it doesn't heat up, we'll have to just either connect it manually or put a better file on it. 
but I do think it is heating up. Yep, it's definitely heating up. So this is gonna heat up. Yeah, it's hot. And you can see here that we have the same problem that we had on this other one. The, the, the plastic has sort of broken off at that tip, which makes it a real pain in the butt to get out. But we can, we can at least try to get it with these tweezers. And if I don't push it in any further, which I just did, right? You can try to get it from the side here. It's, it's kind of a headache. We'll make sure that this is as clean as it can be for you when you get here. But ideally you can pull it out. But once you pull it out and you have a clear shot at the sort of this drive wheel, uh, you, can, you can load up new filament. And so again, PLA, polylactic acid, absorbs moisture and it gets brittle uh, as it sits out in the atmospheric air. So we want to use the ones that are already open, but we got to be careful that it doesn't keep breaking on us and causing our prints to fail. So buy a new roll of, of fab, you know, filament if you are that concerned about it. Uh, but what we do here is we just try to get this filament as straight into this hole as we possibly can. We can push this pinch wheel out and then, oh, look, I broke it because it's brittle. So you gotta be kind of careful with how you force it in there. But again, the straighter you can get this, fresh filament allows you to bend it a little bit better, but um, the trick is just sort of to get it so that it goes in there and into that hole. And then once this thing gets hot enough, it should want to sort of squeeze out material. Now, if it's really close to the build tray, you can always turn this axis up here where my fingers are to get it to move up a little bit. Once it starts moving, it'll be out of your control. Um, so you'll want to do this fast, but you kind of want to just confirm that all the plastic was loaded in correctly and that it's going to come out of the nozzle. And I can see it coming out by me pushing on this. So I think we're good there. We're gonna, we're gonna clean that off with the tweezers. Remember, this is extremely hot now. It's 200 degrees centigrade or higher, and uh, it should start moving here pretty quick, quickly. So that's that. There's other adapters in here that you can use um, to save your files. If you don't have an SD card reader, there's a USB to uh, basically SD card reader conversion tool. We have other things in here like filament cleaners you can put between um, between the filament or over the filament up here so that way it comes through and it cleans the filament. Probably not necessarily for what your folks are doing in this stage of your 3D printing careers. And then we also have, um, I believe these are extension tools so that it makes it, it's supposed to make it a little bit easier to get that SD card sort of working correctly, but we found that not all printers like this. So you can see that it's um, an extension. So basically these go into that slot and then you can plug in a full size SD card, but we found that that hasn't worked so well. So you can feel free to try that if you're not having any luck with the other methods, um, but that's, uh, that's that. Other major issues, I would say just trying to pick a, a part that's ambitious to print. So this one here had at least one surface that was flat that you could print on top of. Uh, you just kind of want to start with something simple. It's got a lot of overhangs and a lot of support structure. You'll be printing for a long time. Well, you've asked you in the homework to print something that's gonna take about, you know, 15 or, you know, 10 minutes. This one looks like it says it's gonna print in 38 minutes. So there's ways you can speed that up, predominantly by changing your layer height. So I'm gonna change that layer height to 0.2. And that's going to dramatically increase the speed at which this thing prints. I can also scale this thing down. And that will also make this thing a lot faster to print. So again, we don't necessarily care what you're printing, we just care that you are printing. So if we just reduce it by 50%, it takes seven minutes, and then you get the idea of how to 3D print. All right, well, thank you again for watching. Hopefully this helps you deal with troubleshooting issues, and you can see here that this print is about 75% uh, complete, and we'll film a little bit more when we get done. This one